Thank you for joining me for best practices for building mobile applications for multiple devices. My name is Serena DuPont and I'm a senior product manager here at Embarcadere Technologies. I'm going to talk to you today about best practices for getting your applications accepted into both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Now when it comes to building applications for mobile devices, it really is a good idea to build those applications with the types of design patterns that users have become accustomed to and would expect in an application. So for example, that includes swipe gestures for navigating between screens, enabling functionality such as pinch and zoom for zooming in on images, and also implementing standard user input patterns. So for example, if you have a sign-up form that's part of your application, you want to automatically shift that form up on keyboard focus to make it easy for the user to enter their information. Now when you're adding navigation to your application, for example, the ability to swipe between forms, it's also nice to add an animated transition. And we have pre-built actions that you can utilize for that within the product. And we also have templates that help you get started. So when you go to File New Multi-Device Application for both Delphi and C++ Builder, you're able to choose from some pre-built templates that also include those types of transitions built in. Another important point to make is that when you're building applications for multiple devices and multiple devices with different uh, resolutions, it's important to provide graphics in multiple resolutions as well. So for example, background graphics, icons, etc. You want to provide those in multiple resolutions such as 1x, 2x, and 3x to ensure that they look crisp on all target devices. Another important point to make is that you don't want to replicate your entire desktop application for mobile and you don't want to clutter up the screen with too many UI elements. So it's really important to be, build functionality based on the form factor and with the Fire UI multi-device designer in Rad Studio it makes it really easy for you to work with a master form to lay out your application and then design it for each form factor specifically. So for example you can show and hide controls on an iPhone that you would show on an iPad form factor and then customize it accordingly. When it comes to mobile applications, it's really also important that they don't require long tutorials. They're really designed to be simple and easy to understand. So sign up forms should be simple, should not be very long forms. And if, for example, you have multiple sign up areas, you should divide them up between different uh, tabs or pages, so to speak. Making app registration optional is also another good idea for success because it allows the user to have a look at your application before committing to sign up for it. Now when it comes to building your app menus, there are different types of menus that you can choose from. A toolbar only navigation is well suited for single screen applications. So for example, if you have a look here in the top right at the screenshot, this is a, an email inbox screenshot. And so for example, in that case, the toolbar only navigation works very well. You have the key functionality such as new emails, delete, flag an email, etc. right there. And then we have the three dot icon for an overflow menu. This is something that's quite popular on Android and has been popular on Android for quite a while as it allows the user to easily access additional functionality that's not available or accessible via a, an icon on the toolbar itself. Toolbar only navigation can also be used in conjunction with a tab control for multi-screen navigation and usually consists of either text buttons or glyph buttons. Now tab bar navigation is used to divide your application into key focus areas. It also provides a very intuitive user experience and it's something that allows the user to know and easily find the key functionality within the app. So for example, home, search, new email, and then the last tab could be settings, for example. So it really makes it easy for the user to, to access the key functionality at a glance. It's usually displayed with annotated glyphs on the bottom, bottom aligned on iOS, and displayed with text on Android at the top. And we have built-in behavior services in FireMonkey and if you set it to platform the setting for the tab control, then it will automatically display itself as a top aligned tab on Android and a bottom aligned tab on iOS. Now, home screen navigation is another type of an application menu that's become quite popular. And you can see in many different types of retail applications today. Similar to the tab bar navigation, it puts the focus area right on, onto one screen. It makes it easy for the user to find the type of information that they're looking for. So we recently did a great webinar on RAT server, and as part of that, we built an IoT solution demo. And this demo you can see represented in the screenshot on the right here, and it really focuses on the key functionality that the, the retail shop wanted the user to access. So for example, search for products, scan a product by barcode, find in-store deals, and then find special offers. And it's usually uh, arranged via 
a grid-like layout. Glyph buttons can be also annotated with text. And this is also something that could span across multiple screens. So for example, you could set up a client-aligned tab control with multiple tabs, set the tab position to none. That would allow you to display and work with um, the, the tabs as views, so to speak. And then you could have multiple tabs that show glyph buttons arranged in a grid-like layout. So you'd be able to swipe between multiple home screens. Now the drawer menu is another very popular application menu that's seen in many different types of applications today that you're probably using on your smartphone. It's a main app menu that's hidden by default. It's invoked via this little hamburger icon. And it really allows you to take advantage of more screen real estate by hiding the application menu for the key for app functionality and only showing it as the user invokes that menu. So by default, usually on phone form factors, the slide and drawer is shown in both portrait and landscape mode, and then on tablet form, form factors, a split menu is shown in landscape mode. Now with RAT Studio, we provide support for both native and custom styling, and that supports also 1x, 2x, and 3x images. So if you're, for example, as I previously mentioned, loading in custom images, iconography, etc., you're easily able to load in images using multiple resolutions to ensure that those images look crisp on all target form factors. The style lookup property makes it really easy to access the available style properties within each style. And you can also use the built-in style designer to easily customize the colors, etc. Now the Fire UI multi-device designer makes it easy to create your application by using a shared master form and then specific views. Now this allows you to lay out your application and then customize it for each form factor. And if we have a look at the screenshots here, the one in the middle that says Android Master, that's our master form. And you can see that's using a multi-view control that's displayed as a docked panel, so you have a split view layout, because it's a designed for an Android tablet. And then to the left of it, you see that same application running on an iPhone in the simulator. And as you can see on that screenshot, it is shown with the slide and drawer. So we have the ability to automatically, with the team multi-view control, customize the layout of our applications and have it behave by default as intended. And then you can, of course, customize those properties as well. Now, with the Fire UI multi-device designer, you can also preview your application at design time using the multi-device preview feature. And with the Fire UI app preview feature, you're able to see what your application is going to look like on device as you're designing it in the IDE. And Jim McKeith is going to show that. Now, what are the key component differences between desktop and mobile application development? So if you have experience building applications for desktop and you're just getting started building applications for mobile, I think this is an important uh, table to have a look at. So for example, if you currently are using TreeView or TGrid in your desktop application, you should be looking at using TListView or TListBox in your mobile application. If you're currently using T-Radio Group or T-Radio Button, you should have a look at creating a segmented control using T-Speed buttons or using a T-List box, or for Android specifically, you could also use a T-Radio button. If you're using a T-Checkbox on desktop, you should be looking at using T-Switch for both iOS and Android. And if you're just focusing on Android, you could also use a T-Checkbox. If you're using T-Menu Bar or T-Main Menu on desktop, you should be looking at using a T-Toolbar with speed buttons, a T-Tap control, or the T-Multiview control on mobile. So here you can see the preferred mobile UI components for both iOS and Android. And we also have a great demo in the product that's called the Mobile Controls demo that allows you to quickly see the preferred controls for both iOS and Android. Now, let's talk about what you should do with toolbar buttons. So on a toolbar, you should always use T-Speed button for toolbar buttons. It's important to also set button alignment. So for example, if we look at the refresh icon here, we have that aligned to the right with a margin of 5. And then we also have the trash icon aligned to the left with a left margin of 5. So it's really important that you set both the alignment and also margins. When you're using both titles, so for example, address book, along with buttons, you want to make sure that the align property for the T-label control, the title in this case, is set to contents, and that the text settings horizontal alignment and vertical alignment property is set to center. All controls that are parented to T-toolbar must have an alignment value set. And if you set the alignment property to contents for T-label for the title, you ensure that everything is laid out and aligned properly along with the icons that you're using. 
Now here are some don'ts for the application title. You should never align the application title to the left as you can see here. And this is a good example. You don't have any other icons or buttons or anything on the, on the form itself. And the title is just aligned to the left. And that should never be the case. It should be aligned to center by default. And you should use style lookup equals tool label as the styling property for your application title. And again, you should use T label, style lookup tool label, align to contents, and then set the horizontal and vertical alignment for the text to center. Now, when it comes to navigational back buttons, they're certainly an important part of applications. It's important not to use them for canceling an action. So you don't want to use a back button to allow the user to cancel out of a screen. You should instead place a cancel button onto the toolbar, for example. You don't want to place it on the bottom toolbar and you don't want to choose an alignment other than left. So a back button should not be displayed on the bottom toolbar, should always be displayed left aligned on the top toolbar, and it should never be right aligned either. So you can see in the screenshots here, so it shouldn't be used to cancel an action, it shouldn't be top right aligned, it shouldn't be bottom, uh, bottom left aligned. It should only be used for navigating to the prior screen, always shown on the top left corner, and you should use a T-Speed button with the back tool button style lookup property. So you can see that here, we have the back text and using text is optional. And on Android, by default, it always shows the icons. That's the standard style. Now here are some don'ts for using the tab control. No icons selected for tabs on iOS. As you can see in the first screenshot here, it's really important that tabs on iOS use iconography. On Android, they should never be aligned to the bottom. The default alignment for tabs is on the top. And you shouldn't have more than five tabs on a phone form factor. So as you can see here, tabs are commonly displayed at the top of the screen on Android. And they're traditionally displayed only with text. Now with the T-Tab control in Rad Studio, we have behavior services support in FireMonkey built into the control that allows you to automatically display it as a top aligned tab on Android and a bottom aligned tab on iOS. This will happen by default. You can override this if you want, but that's the default behavior. So it makes it really easy for you to know what the standard uh, design guidelines are for this control by just using the built-in behavior services. Now on iOS, typically the tabs are shown at the bottom of the screen and they should show both text and icons, which can be set via the style lookup property. So you can select the tab control, you can select the tab item, then go to the style lookup property and select your custom icon. You can select one of the predefined icons, etc. You can customize the colors and more. Now, when it comes to tab controls, one of the things that I just mentioned is you should not mo use more than five tabs on the phone form factor. So what if you need additional navigation? So for example, in that case, tab five, as you can see in the first screenshot here, you can use the more items tab uh, item style lookup property. You could parent a um, client aligned uh, list view or list box to that tab item for additional navigation. Now on Android, it's also popular to, for example, display an over overflow pop-up menu for additional items. And alternatively, you could also use a team multi view for your app navigation. Now talking about Team Multiview, Team Multiview is our smart menu component. It automatically adjusts itself depending on form, fa form factor, uh, orientation, and target platform using FireMonkey's behavior services. So for example, on a phone in both landscape and portrait mode, by default it's displayed as a slide and drawer. And there are different properties that you can set, for example, the placement, the, the mode for the slide and drawer, you can select the duration of the sliding, etc. For a tablet form factor, by default, the T Multiview control represents itself as a docked panel in landscape mode and in portrait mode as a slide and drawer. And those defaults can be changed and adjusted as needed. Now, when it comes to creating a segmented control, you want to make sure that if you're using a segmented control on the toolbar, you first parent a T layout to the toolbar control and then set T layout dot align to center and parent the buttons to the layout. And then you can select the alignment for the first button to left, the second first to center, and the last one to right. Now, when you're creating a segmented control, you need to make sure that you shift select all the buttons that you want to have part of that segmented control, and then set a group name. It should be the same group name for all of them to indicate that they're part of the segmented control group. And then you can select each of the individual buttons and select the segmented button styling to customize the look of those controls. Now, when it comes to using a switch control, there are a couple things to keep in mind. On both iOS and Android, you should never parent a T-switch to a toolbar, and you should never place a T-switch onto a form without using a list control. So it should never be floating on the form by itself. So here are some examples of good practices for the T-switch control. 
On both iOS and Android, you should always use a switch control in a list item anchored to the right with margin set, as you can see in the screenshots here. And if you're just developing for Android, you could also be using a checkbox to enable an option, for example, and on a settings screen, but a T-switch is really recommended. Now, there is no concept of a radio group on iOS, so you should not be using radio buttons. Instead, what you should be using for iOS and Android, you should use either a T-list box, as you can see in the banking selection screenshot here, and then that you can leverage the accessory of a check mark to set a check mark for any of the items that you're selecting. Or you could set up a T-speed button with a group name to set up a segmented control to allow the user to select an option. On Android specifically, you could also use radio buttons as they are common on Android, but not on iOS. Now, when it comes to general button use within your application and on your form, it's important that all buttons have the same height and they use even spacing and anchors. And that ensures that your buttons look nice across all the form factors that you're targeting. Now, when it comes to using T-list box, T-list box is really designed for short lists with no to minimal scrolling, specifically settings lists and input forms, as you can see on the screen here. And there are several different style properties that you can set with T-list box. You can use the group header item for the list box headers. There is the grouping kind property of grouped and the transparent list box style, as you can see here. And then for additional descriptive text above or below the settings, you can also use a T-label with list box item label as the style property. And if you're parenting a T-edit to any of your list box items, so for example, if you're creating an input form, as you can see here for customer information and the screenshots, you could use a T-edit with or without the transparent edit style property. And we have many great demos included with RAS Studio that show you how to do just that. So for example, if you go to multi-device samples user interface and you go to the settings example, you can see this demo that you see in the screenshots here. We also have a keyboard forms demo that shows you how to set up the UI for an input form. Now T-List View is designed for long data bound scrollable lists. It has built-in support for various item appearance modes that you can choose from by default. For example, you can either use the built-in appearance modes or you can fully customize the look of your list view and the entire layout using the list view item designer. With FireMonkey, we also provide support for custom styling, as I previously mentioned, and as part of the bonus pack, you get access to a premium style pack for multi-device applications that allows you to easily give your application a fully custom look. I hope this overview on building mobile applications for multiple device targets and the do's and don'ts and key points to keep in mind as you're designing your applications were helpful to you as you're building your multi-device applications with Rad Studio.